So your session for Fluent says that you initially tried to resist HTML5. Why did you try to resist and how did it win you over? Well, um, I did, did JavaScript back you know, 10 years ago and JavaScript and Flash were going head to head and Flash kind of took off so I went towards the Flash route and as Flash matured and became a, you know, a stronger type language and followed some of the stuff that I was also doing like Java and C Sharp, I really started getting attached to these languages that had a very you know, strong architecture to them, were strongly typed and could allow you to scale them very easily in a team. So I had these reservations about going back to the stone age of programming with JavaScript, but luckily over the years, JavaScript also has evolved and you know, we have a lot of really good frameworks out now, stuff like jQuery that help hide a lot of the nuances of, of setting up JavaScript you know, by hand. And I think that's like the hallmark of, of a language as it matures is that you get these really solid frameworks. So I can actually focus on making code and creating the stuff that I want and not fighting the language itself. So while I want more structure, what I find is that um, with JavaScript now, I'm able to just you know pull up any of these really good uh, frameworks like jQuery and then just build my application. And that's really you know what I see as the hallmark, uh, like I was saying, of, of these languages maturing because you look at Rails or you look at Ruby, and it wasn't very popular until Rails came along and made that easier to use. And you look at Java and things like Swing that came out and really sped up development. You know, we're at a really good time in JavaScript where there's so many really good frameworks and so many good things going on that I don't have to worry about forcing JavaScript to act the way that I want to. I can actually speed up my development by using some of these really good libraries. Now, how useful is HTML5 and JavaScript for game development? Um, well, it's. Um, it's a very loaded question because, you know, JavaScript has gotten incredibly fast over the years. Uh, it's very powerful. Uh, all these HTML5 uh, technologies that we're looking at, like Canvas and the Audio Tag, are all maturing very quickly. The problem is is consistency across the browsers. Um, you know, I think iOS is really pushing this forward as much as possible because everyone wants to be on iOS and I'm able to get my games to run at 60 frames a second. Then you look at Android, which is completely fragmented and Canvas and audio support are barely working uh, and it makes it very difficult. And then you look at desktop browsers and the lifespan of a desktop browser uh, version is so long that it's, it's very hard to get people to be on the cutting edge. So I think the technology is there. The problem is just the consistency across the platform. So if you work around those uh, limitations and understand them, and you make very specialized uh, games that work in, in you know, specific environments, I think you'll have a lot of success. Now, if you're looking to go broader based, though, do, do you have to still turn to Flash? Is that really the option? Well, I think that what's going to happen and where HTML5 gaming is really interesting to me is not even in the browser. It's kind of the stuff that like Microsoft is doing with Windows 8. Mm -hmm. If you look at Windows 8, you can build an HTML5 Metro app and it actually acts like a native application. So you get hardware accelerated canvas, you get full audio support, and you get incredible performance and tied into the operating system. And I think that more and more of these technologies, you look at PhoneGap, it's still in its infancy. There is a lot of technologies that is wrapping the core of what HTML5 is supposed to do, but delivering some sort of native um, executable or deliver, uh, you know, application that you can wrap your code with. I think that's really where HTML5 gaming is going to shine. The stuff that I run on my Windows 8 tablet looks native, and the best example is Cut the Rope. Mm -hmm. Cut the Rope was a really great game that was written on iOS and C++ and Objective-C, ported over to JavaScript. It runs excellent in the browser. Once you put it on a Windows 8 tablet, you can't tell that it's not a native application. Okay. And I think that's mm -hmm. really where we're going to start seeing that, that, you know, that evolve. So last question for you. How difficult is it for a game developer to move over to the HTML5 side? I is it trivial to pick up, or, or are there a lot of obstacles along the way? Well, I think you know the biggest part about moving over to any technology is not fighting the grain. So, you know, going back to your first question about my hesitation to go to JavaScript, you know, I really wanted classes and I wanted structure and all the stuff I love in other uh, programming languages. But I think that once you start accepting JavaScript for what it is and play with the dynamicity of it and be able to do what you want wherever you want, uh, you know, it opens up a whole new creative palette to be able to program. Game development is the same as it's been done all the way back to Atari. Uh, a lot of the same techniques you look at in Nintendo games, uh, you know, Sega games, are all being used today in, in HTML5 games, especially with Canvas and, and rasterizing graphics to, the, uh, uh, to bitmap data and to the Canvas. And that's exactly what I did in Flash too. So I just simply take these portable skills I know, which is optimizing uh, algorithms, AI, 
um, collision detection, and I just port it over to the language and figure out what makes this language strong, what makes this language weak, and work around you know, the subtleties of that. Great. Well, thanks so much for being with us. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you for having me.